In this video, we will study how to solve signaling games. By the end of this video, you should be able to use Bayes' rule to calculate posterior probabilities in signaling games and solve for the perfect Bayes-Nash equilibrium of a signaling game. A signaling game is a sequential game of incomplete information. In these games, there is at least one player who does not know their opponent's type. A basic signaling game consists of three steps. In the first step, nature determines the type of the first player by determining the outcome of some random event, such as the toss of a coin or the roll of a die. In the second step, the first player chooses their action. In step three, the second player learns what the first player did, but not the first player's type. The second player then chooses their action. At this point, the game ends, and both players learn the outcome of the game and their earnings. Let's consider the extensive form of a basic signaling game. This extensive form is a bit different from others that you might have seen, because instead of reading it from top to bottom or left to right, you read this game from the center outward. Nature moves first and determines whether player 1 is type A or type B. In the case of this example, since player 1 is equally likely to be either type, you can think of nature as determining the outcome of a coin toss. Player 1 moves second and can choose either left or right. Note that player 1 knows whether they are a type A player or a type B player when they make their decision. Lastly, player 2 moves. Player 2 can choose either up or down. Note that player 2 knows whether player 1 has chosen left or right, but not whether player one is type A or type B. The solution to a signaling game, as well as other sequential games of incomplete information, is called a perfect Bayes-Nash equilibrium. It is the incomplete information version of a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. The first step to solving for the perfect Bayes-Nash equilibrium of a signaling game is to define each player's strategy. For player one, a strategy will be a plan for each of player one's decision nodes. Since each of player one's decision nodes corresponds to a different type for player one, player one's strategy is a plan of action for each possible type that they can be. Player two's strategy is more complicated. It must consist of two parts. The first part is a plan for what to do at each of player two's information sets. Since each of these information sets corresponds to a different action by player one, this part of the strategy is a plan for what to do for each of player one's possible actions. The second part of player two's strategy is a set of beliefs. These beliefs consist of what player two thinks the probability that player one is type A or type B is. Player 2 forms these beliefs by observing player 1's action and updating the probabilities set by nature using Bayes' rule. If you are unfamiliar with Bayes' rule, I recommend you review the video on Bayes' rule on this web page before moving on. Step 2 of solving signaling games is to look for an equilibrium. There are two main types of equilibria in a signaling game, a separating equilibrium and a pooling equilibrium. We will explore examples of each of these in the remainder of this video. We will start solving the game we've set up so far by defining what each player's strategy should look like. Player 1's strategy must include an action for each possible type that nature could choose for them. Player 2's strategy must have two parts. The first part is a plan of action for each of Player 1's possible actions. The second part are beliefs about the probability that player 1 is type A or type B, which depend on whether player 2 observes player 1 playing right or left. Next, we will look for a separating equilibrium in this game. In a separating equilibrium, player 2 can determine player 1's type by observing player 1's action. In this game, it is easy to see that if player 1 is type A, then it is always better for them to play right, since a type A player 1's payoffs from right are always higher than a type A player 1's payoffs from playing left. Similarly, if player 1 is type B, it is always better for them to play left. Given that this is the case for player 1, if player 2 observes player 1 playing right, then player 2 should assume that player 1 is type A, and player 2 should play up. 
Similarly, if player two observes player one playing left, they should assume that player one is type B and player two should play down. We have now found a separating equilibrium to this game. If player one is type A, they should play right, and if player one is type B, they should play left. If player one chooses left, then player two should play down, and if player one chooses right, then player two should play up. The last part of the equilibrium are player two's beliefs. If player one chooses left, then player two knows that player one is type B. So player two should believe that the probability that player one is type A is zero. Similarly, if player one plays right, then player two knows that player one is type A. So player two should believe that the probability that player one is type A is one. We can confirm that this set of strategies and beliefs is in equilibrium by asking ourselves whether, given what the other player is doing, either player has an incentive to change their strategy. Let's think about whether player one has an incentive to change. First, given player two's strategy and beliefs, does a type A player have an incentive to switch from right to left? If they do, then player two will assume that player one is type B and will play down. But because player one is type A, they will only get 10 in this case. So a type A player one will not want to play left instead of right. Similarly, a type B player one will not want to play right because if they do, player two will assume that they are type A and will play up. This will result in player one only getting 20, which is less than the 40 that they would have gotten if they stick with their strategy of playing left when they are type B. Given player one's strategy, player two also has no incentive to change their strategy. Given their beliefs, player two will make 10 instead of 50 if they play down when they observe player one playing right, Similarly, if player two observes player one playing left and believes them to be a type B player, if player two plays up instead of down, they will make 20 instead of 40. The last thing to check is whether player two's beliefs are consistent with Bayes' rule. It turns out that they are. To check whether player two's beliefs are consistent with Bayes' rule, we need to use the equation for Bayes' rule combined with player one's strategy. When we plug in the relevant probabilities based on player one's strategy and nature's prior probabilities that player one is type A or type B, we see that player two's beliefs are consistent with Bayes' rule. It turns out that in a signaling game with a separating equilibrium, a player's beliefs and about their opponent's type will always have the probability of one type equal to one and the probabilities of the other types equal to zero. We can now determine whether this game has a pooling equilibrium. In a pooling equilibrium, a player always plays the same action, regardless of their type. One possible pooling equilibrium is for player one to always play right. Without even thinking too hard about what player two will do in this case, we can rule this out as a possible equilibrium because a type B player one will want to change to playing left, regardless of what player two does. Therefore, this game does not have a pooling equilibrium. We can generate a game that does have a pooling equilibrium if we adjust the payoffs a bit. In this game, player one will always play right because it results in higher payoffs for player one, regardless of whether they are type A or type B. But what should player two do, and what should player two believe? First off, note that since player one's action does not tell player two anything about their type, player two has no information on which to update the prior probabilities that nature started the game with. Therefore, player two should believe that player one is still equally likely to be type A or type B. Next, what should player two do? Player two should choose the action that maximizes their expected payoff. Since player two's expected payoff from up is 35, 
and from down is 25, player two should play up. We have now found a pooling equilibrium to this game. If player one is type A, they should play right, and if player one is type B, they should also play right. If player one chooses right, then player two should choose up and should believe that player one is equally likely to be type A as type B. But what should player two do if player one plays left, and what should player two believe? Playing left is a strange and unexpected thing for player one to do, given that it is a dominated strategy for both types of player one. However, player two needs to have a plan to complete their strategy so that they know what to do in the unlikely event that player one does something crazy. Let's tackle what player two should believe first and then think about what they should do. In a pooling equilibrium, if player one plays left, player two can hold any beliefs about player one's type. So if player two believes that player one is type A, they should play up. If they believe that player one is type B, they should play down. If they believe, for example, that there is a 10% chance that player one is type A and a 90% chance that player one is type B, player two should also play down. All of these beliefs are consistent with player one playing left, and as long as player two chooses an optimal action that is consistent with these beliefs, player two's strategy is part of the pooling equilibrium. So, one possible pooling equilibrium has player two believing that the probability that player one is type A is 10% and playing down when player one plays left, but this is only one of many possible strategies for player two in this pooling equilibrium. As a last check, we can see that both these sets of beliefs are consistent with Bayes' rule. Because the probability that player one is type A when they play left is undefined, player two can hold any set of beliefs about player one's type that they want, as long as the probabilities of these types add up to one. Note that in a signaling game with a pooling equilibrium, a player's beliefs about their opponent's type will equal the prior probabilities when their opponent plays an expected action. When their opponent plays an unexpected action, their beliefs can be any probabilities. This concludes this video on signaling games. Thank you for watching.